Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Veda and this is The Simple Budget. Here on my channel I show you how my family is using the zero-based budgeting method in order to maintain a simplified financial life. If that sounds like content that you're interested in, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and join our little crew here. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Well, hello everyone and happy Friday. I actually um, am feeling like very cozy and relaxed today. I kind of feel like all holidays should be on Thursdays because then you're starting the weekend of recovery <laughs> on a Friday and you can kind of recoup a little bit and then you have the weekend to recoup even more. And I'm really enjoying that. I know Halloween isn't technically a holiday, but when you've got kids who are up late, well, later than mine usually are, um, collecting candy and maybe sneaking some pieces. It's nice to have a little bit of calm <laughs> the day after and then get into the weekend and just relax a little bit. So anyways, I am here to you with you today with a Christmas scented candle because as far as I'm concerned, November 1st is the start of the Christmas season. You cannot stop me. I do honor Thanksgiving, but Christmas is the jam around here. I start listening to Christmas music on November 1st. I light my Christmas candles, and if I can help it, I start decorating a little bit here and there as well. I'm just one of those people. Anyways, today's video is going to be my weekly check-in video, and that, if you're new around here, is the bread and butter, the nuts and bolts, the super duper important part of budgeting. If you are new to zero-based budgeting, cash stuffing, all of it, the weekly check-in for me, the expense tracking is really where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. I'm gonna use as many euphemisms as I possibly can to describe this. <laughs> um, is it a euphemism or is it a, maybe it's a euphemism. Mm, probably not. One of you will correct me down in the comments, I know. Anyways, the expense tracking portion of the budgeting system, any budgeting system, I don't care what budgeting system you're using, but if you are not tracking your expenses, you're not holding yourself accountable and you're not making sure that you're staying in budget. And the more time you allow to go between um tracking your expenses and holding your budgeting system accountable, the easier it is to say, oh, we'll just restart it next month or whatever. Um, so just to give you a little bit of insight into the way that we have always operated, when we first started this, especially because I was very, very um, spendy, I was super irresponsible with money, I just sort of had this notion that it was growing on trees somewhere and my husband was picking it for us every single month. Um, but it was really important for us in the beginning to make sure that we were going over expenses almost daily. I'm not even kidding you. But it took such a minimal amount of time when you were doing it daily um, or every other day. Um, I promise you it's not an intensive process if you are staying on top of it. Um, and even now we do it like twice, two to three times a week. And even though those are longer sessions, um, they, they're still really kind of easy to get through. And honestly and truly, a lot of our work comes into play because I have a YouTube channel. If we, if I didn't post content for you guys, we would probably, I say this all the time, we would probably just do a digital system instead of cash envelope stuffing, although I'm not entirely sure that I would because I like the cash stuffing system. Like for me, that's what makes it fun. And if something is fun, I'm going to stick with it. Obviously, I have now for almost two years. So I would say it's probably working. But a lot of our work comes in with the budget because of the fact that, you know, I have this YouTube channel and I'm sharing our budgeting system with you guys. And so that creates extra work for us. So it wouldn't exist if I didn't film and upload for you guys. So just know that um, most of our work is work because I've created the work for us. But um, 
it really is important to hold your spending accountable and track what you're spending in each category. It really does make a difference when you're doing this and it helps to give you a, an idea of um, what you're working with actually within your budget. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into my budget planner here just to give you guys a more like hands-on look at what I'm talking about here, especially if you're new. Um, oh, just as an FI, FYI for you guys, um, I make anything that's handmade that you see here on my channel. So dashboards, placeholders, cash envelopes, and my budget planner that I actually have in here. But one of the reasons why I'm telling you about this, one, because I, I, I mean, obviously I like to tell you about the products that I make in my Etsy shop. It's part of the income in our house. And so it is important to us, but also for the entire month of November. So starting today, um, I, my entire Etsy shop is going to be 15% off. So if you were looking to take advantage of, um, a sale from me, this is a good time to do it. Um, I have a lot of, um, fun, like Christmas products in there. I just recently, um, uploaded a, or launched rather a Christmas savings challenge bundle, which will not help you for this Christmas. But if you start saving a year in advance, like we do for Christmas, it will help you for next Christmas. How many times can I say Christmas in 30 seconds? Um, anyways, so my entire shop is on sale for the entire month of November. And that's mostly because also I'm going to be gone for half of December. And so if you guys want Christmas products, now is a good time to buy them from me. Um, or just any kind of, you know, budgeting products. Um, but anyways, I'm going to jump into, we're still, our expenses are still in October, even though we are in November. And I'm just going to grab out... Oh, I don't even have. Oh, okay. Here we go. I'm going to um I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys in um to my expense tracking pages and we will Why do I have a November That must have been a misprint. Anyways, I'm going to zoom you guys in and we will actually get into the expense tracking. All right. Now that we are zoomed in here, we can just get right into the expense tracking. So what we do, I'll just give you like a brief little overview here. I write down um, every expense that we spend from our cash stuffed categories, but in a non-cash stuffed way. So if we've debited or online purchased or something like that, um, and it comes from a cash stuffed category, we track the expense, I reconcile it, pull the cash from the envelope, and then return that to the bank. And that's how we... Um, make sure that we're staying accountable to our budgeting every single week. We do this weekly. Um, and the reason for that is because, like I said, if you take too much time between um, expense tracking sessions, it's really easy to be like, first of all, to forget what you have available in each spending category, but then also to just like push it off and then say, oh, it's fine. We went over this month. We'll just track it again next month. And so this is where like the discipline comes in, but also making sure that you are always in budget and knowing what you have in each category. And I will say this too, knowing what you have constantly available in each category makes it really easy. Like say if you, I'm trying to think, like maybe you have a work bonus or maybe you were given a gift card or something like that. It makes it really easy to decide where you're going to put the extra money that comes into your house if you are tracking your expenses and involved with your budget this intimately because honestly and truly you can take those little bits and pieces of money here and there and add them to places and really make a big difference in your overall budgeting picture if you know it this well and that has been one of the things that we've been pleasantly surprised about throughout this entire budgeting process is the fact that we know our budget so well that whenever like extra or unplanned money comes in, we know exactly where to put it because we're like, you know what, we're running a little bit of a deficit here or this is feeling a little sparse. Let's go ahead and fill that up to make sure that, you know, we're kind of staying ahead of the game. And so that's another reason why I recommend doing this. But Anyways, let's jump into it. I am chatty enough as it is. Um, first up, we had a CVS purchase. If you guys watched my cash stuffing video on Monday, you will know that Mr. Simple got the snot scraped out of his eye. I mean, that was a very bizarre way of phrasing it. He he was rolling with somebody and they he took a finger to the eye and it like scratched the area around his cornea. And so we had to go see an ophthalmologist and 
they gave him like an eye ointment, an antibiotic eye ointment to make sure that no infection sets in because him losing his eyeball would be like a big deal. So anyway, that came from our medical category. It was $15 and I'm going to be returning $15 to the bank. Uh, next up was our copay for the eye doctor, also coming from medical. This was $45, and I will be returning $45 to the bank. Um, next up was a toiletries purchase. I am struggling to remember what it was. Oh, I remember what it was. I remember what it was. Um, we ran out of mouthwash, and just like the... Um, tooth powder, toothpaste that I've been telling you guys about, and the lip balm that I got from that Van Man company. We also really, I love their mouthwash. It feels so refreshing. They use like aloe and coconut oil and peppermint, really like real peppermint. Um, and it's very refreshing and feels very cleansing. I'm not even like really a mouthwash person, but I love this mouthwash. So um, I got a, a two pack for $17.50. I know it's expensive. A little goes a really long way, like with most of their products. I'll leave it linked below if you're interested. And this is a good time of telling you guys about our virtual coin jar. What I mean by that is you can see here, our purchase was $17 and 50 cents. I'm gonna be returning $18 to the bank. My husband tracks all of these change overages. He knows literally to the penny what our budget looks like. This is, that's just his jam. Maybe you don't have to feel, or feel the need to be as, you know, in detail as he is, but he really enjoys it. It's like something that makes him very happy. Um, anyways, he tracks the change overage in a spreadsheet that he keeps. Um, and what um, we do is that change will kind of build up and we use that as like a miscellaneous or like a cash buffer or whatever. If we have some like random expense that comes in that's like $2 and some change, he'll pull it from that. Um, we use it for a variety of different reasons, but we call it our virtual coin jar because it's literally all the change that's left over from returning whole dollar amounts to the bank um, from rounding up. Sometimes we round down, you'll see that in here too, but for the most part, we like to round up so that we can take advantage of that change overage. Um, next up is groceries. I'm just going to let you know now. We went over groceries this week. It was sort of unintentional. It was sort of intentional. It's like weird to explain. Um, but we just wanted to stock up on some items in our home that were like non-perishables and just make sure that our meat, our meat, <laughs> our freezer was stocked with a little bit of extra meat. Um, because frankly, <laughs> this sounds like kind of crazy preppery, but we don't know what the results of the election are going to be on Tuesday. And we also don't know how the country is going to react either way. And so we sort of felt like, let's maybe have a little bit of water on hand and some non-perishable like jerky and some meat in the freezer so that if people lose their minds, either way, we can be prepared. <laughs> and so that's why we went over a little bit on groceries this week. It's not typical for us um, lately to do that. I'm usually either right on budget or if I do go over, it's because I, you know, I have a good reason for it. And this felt for me felt like a good reason just to have a little bit of extra available in our refrigerator to us. So you're going to see a couple grocery, uh, grocery purchases that are unplanned for. We're going to shake that out like over the course of the month. If we need to pull from our emergency fund to pad it a little bit, we might do that too. It's just, we're going to have to wait and see either way. $25.95, and I'm going to be returning $26 to the bank. Uh, next up was an Apple purchase, and it, it was only $15.89, um, and Mr. Simple and I split this purchase. So we really like the show Scrubs, and we I think we own all of the shows that we love and watch on a regular basis, except for Scrubs. Scrubs is one that we will come back to maybe not once a year, but definitely once every other year. And we don't own all of the seasons. We owned like the first three and we were watching them. And then we got to the fourth season and realized, oh, we don't have this. And so we purchased it and we split it between the two of us um, because it was just like a shared beneficial expense. So $8 is from Mr. Simple, $7.89 is from me, but we're both returning $8 to the bank because we rounded up for mine. So that's how that works. <laughs> Um, next up, oh my gosh, this was so funny. So my mom texted our family group chat the other day and she was like, my mom, by the way, 
And this may be like a nice little helpful tip for those of you parents out there who are trying to figure out what to do as far as holidays are concerned with your kids. My mom has five children. I am the oldest of five. And she kind of knew early on um, in our lives, like she's got, there are two girls and three boys. And she's like, if I want to have all five of my kids together at the holiday season, the easiest and best way to do that is to host a Christmas Eve party because most families, you know, travel to family members' houses on Christmas Day. And so she thought in order to be able to have all of us together for the Christmas season, she would host Christmas Eve every year. And apart from the fact that some of us do not live close by, that has always worked out. Um, everybody goes to my mom's house for Christmas Eve. And it's so fun. It's a lovely tradition. My mom literally has a menu full of food that doesn't make sense together cohesively, but it is literally a favorite food of like all of her kids. So she does stuffed shells for those of us who like Italian. Um, she makes a variety of different desserts. She makes an ambrosia salad every year, literally just because our baby brother likes it, like the baby baby. Um, he's the only person who likes it and eats it and she makes it specifically for him. So like, that's what I mean. Her, her, her menu doesn't really make sense together. Um, cause she also has kielbasa on the menu because a lot of us really like that. Um, but it's literally just a, a combo of all of her children's and my dad, although my dad passed away a couple years ago. Um, all of our different favorite foods. So it's just such a fun night. I'm so looking forward to it this year. And my mom decided um, somewhat last minute, because she literally just texted us this past week. And she was like, I've decided that in order for you to come to Christmas Eve this year, it's going to be an ugly sweater party. And so I was like, Ma, you're killing me, you know, because I'm definitely the basic Becky. I like to like, I don't coordinate outfits for my family, but I like us to all look nice. And, um, you know, especially given I haven't gone to Christmas Eve there in a couple years now, um, I was really hoping to like, you know, put together nice little outfits for me and my family. Instead, I'm now scouring like eBay and Poshmark for um, secondhand ugly Christmas sweaters so that I'm not spending a ton of money on them. Um, and then I can just like resell them when I'm done. But um, I did find, I found one for me and I found one for my hubby. And I've got to tell you, I'm like so unbelievably proud of myself. So for Mr. Simple, which is what this one was, this was on eBay. It is the leg lamp from Christmas, a Christmas story. And it lights up, guys. How do you leave that sitting there? I'm hoping that it fits him because he's sort of, he's six foot five, so he's tall and he's broad. Um, so I'm like really hoping that the extra large fits him, but that's what I ordered for him. It ended up coming out, including like tax and shipping to $28.12, which is not bad for a man's like ugly Christmas sweater. Um, and it's it like it works like the battery pack where it's, it works it lights up and everything so I'm going to be returning $28 to the bank this is going to come from our Christmas envelope and Mr. Simple didn't make us round up to the next <laughs> to $29 he just kept it down at $28.12 um, actually you know what I'm going to leave a picture of the sweater up on the screen for you now by the way if you are looking for an ugly Christmas sweater I have seen this one in so many different sizes on both eBay and Poshmark so Go snag you one because it is absolutely fantastic. I could not have been more pleased that this thing existed like out there in the universe. Um, next up was Whole Foods. And I just picked up a variety of different sale items that they had for um, certain items that I was going to need for Thanksgiving. Um, they had these delicious, oh my gosh, if you guys, I can't remember the brand now, but if you go to Whole Foods, they have this. It's like a small chocolatier that they work with that may, or a small batch chocolatier that makes these salted caramel chocolates. And I always put them like on my charcuterie boards, um, just as like a little something like salty and sweet. They're delicious. Um, so they were on sale. So I was like, oh, let me snag those. And so, um, because for my, my uh, Thanksgiving dessert open house, um, I'm also going to do like a little bit of a charcuterie board. So anyway, the total of what I purchased from Whole Foods came to $26.55 and I'll be returning $26 to the bank. Next up, more Thanksgiving. Um, I actually purchased this through Canva. I designed some um, 
uh, just deck or I'm not decorations, good grief, Veda. Um, some um, invitations um, to actually pass out to people. Some people I want to actually pass out physical invitations to. Um, others, like we can just screen grab and send it to them. But um, I ordered some physical invitations for mostly for our neighbors. And so the total came to $31.75 and I'm going to be returning $32 to the bank also from our Thanksgiving envelope. Oh, this was a big one. Next up was Target. And the total cost came to $144.52. This was also part of my Veda is prepping in the event of a bizarre disaster in the aftermath of the election. Um, I stocked up on toilet paper. Um, and they were having like a sale for certain household products. And we needed some um, laundry detergent. And so I picked up on that too. So it's $70 coming from household. This will deplete our envelope and then some. It's going to leave us with a little discrepancy, but we'll also be spending less because I picked up toilet paper when I didn't need to. And I picked up a ton of laundry detergent because it was like buy three and get a $10 gift card. So now I have a $10 gift card to use at Target the next time I go shopping. So anyways, 70 of it came from household and another $74.52 was groceries and I'll be returning $74 to the bank. If I have it, we're going to have to play around with our grocery bill this month. Uh, oh, next up. So this was my ugly Christmas sweater. So I had it in my head. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this Christmas movie. It's not considered a classic by any stretch of, stretch of the imagination. But for some reason, it is one that I love to watch every year. It's called Christmas with the Cranks. And Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis are in it. And they're so fantastic. And Jamie Lee Curtis plays the stereotypical 90s suburban mom so well and in this movie I swear she like in every other scene she's wearing a sweater vest with a white turtleneck under it which if you are a child who you're you're an 80s baby if you're like late gen x early millennial or I'm sorry elder millennial especially like that the the sweater vest with the turtleneck underneath of it was like peak that time period um and so, and I'll, you know what, I'll see if I can find a picture of her, like a still from the movie and leave it up on the screen for you now so that you can see what my inspiration was. And wouldn't you know it, on Poshmark, I found the most hideous, I mean, absolutely hideous uh, sweater vest for Christmas. It's red, it's gaudy. I don't usually even wear colors, but I'm so excited about this thing because I'm just embracing the ugly sweater Christmas Eve party now, so... Um, it came to $22.70. I'm going to be returning $22 to the bank. Um, next up, we've got actually, I think, yeah, two Amazon materials purchases for my Etsy shop. Um, this one came to $34.54, and I'm, I'm going to return $35 to the bank. And this one uh, came to $82.22, and I will also be return. I'm going to return $82 to the bank for this one. And this was it for this week. It wasn't too, too bad. Um, some high dollar things, but we're just entering that season where we're buying things more and more. It just is what it is, you know? Anyways, I'm going to zoom you guys back out and then we will actually get into the unstuffing. By the way, today is the unstuffing is going to be massively entertaining, I'm sure, because as of filming this video, I have already filmed my Etsy and YouTube cash stuffing for the month of October and my bill condensing. And so that means that I have some pretty condensed envelopes here and um, this could be really fun to see like if I'm able to <laughs> make good change. Anyways, actually let me move this out of the way really quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and add up all of these expenses. Now I need to make sure that I, you know, total, I total all this up and I know what I'm expected to have at the end of the unstuffing portion. I always zoom you guys through this because watching me use a calculator is like watching paint dry. So I will add it up and then come right back. All right, so at the end of this, I should have $489. I will be shy on groceries, but we knew that going into it. But this at least gives me a framework uh, to work within so that I have some expectation of what I'm supposed to have at the end. And then we'll just subtract any deficits from it. And that's just how we handle it. So I'm going to jump right in to high priority because we've got medical up first. So 45 and 15, that is 60. Okay. 
You know I had to add that. Okay, yes, $60 coming from medical. Let's just all hope and pray that I didn't screw myself over here. Of course. First up, and we are in for a real treat. Okay, so let me check out what other things I can pull in here. So toiletries, I know I've got... 18. I think that's the only toiletries purchase too. Yes. So 18. That will give us change. So 10, 5, 1, 2, 3. Perfect. Oh, that leaves me with 10, 15, 20, 1, and 2. Whoops. So... So I have 22 left in toiletries. And you know what? I'm going to pull in my um, my household money as well. So that was $70. I think I only have 60 in here, which is fine. We just move that discrepancy over to the next week and stuff it a little bit less. But I'll just check. 20, 30, 45, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Yep. So I'm just going to stuff it $10 less at the beginning or at our first uh, November cash stuffing and it will all sort itself out. So I do need to note the $10 discrepancy over here though. So minus 10, I have zero now left in household and I, I definitely have enough change now for medical. So let me pop back in to medical and grab this $100 bill and everything evidently and then i can bring um oh no put it there 40 dollars back in so 20 30 and 40. see this is the problem with doing a bill condensing um now in medical we've got 20 40 50 60 1 2 3 and 4. And I only put down um, the remaining balance on the very last purchase in a category. Um, there's no need to write that more than one time. Okay, grocery is empty. So we're just going to skip those entirely. And let me just grab this really quickly. So I was supposed to return 26 and 74. So that leaves us with, oh, that's a $100 deficit. And so here, let me show you guys what I do, even though I've got like tight space around here. So, oh no, I'm going into, I need to go into November. I grabbed out all of my expense tracking pages. And so what I do is I go into my monthly funding plan. This all the, by the way, this all comes together in my budget planner. I have it um, split up if you want me to print it and ship it to you. I do that in quarters, but every month comes with, a whole monthly budget overview, five paycheck plans, a monthly funding plan, um, expense tracking pages. Like it's full of pretty much all the goodies you're going to need for um, a month or a quarter of budgeting. And the monthly funding plan is one that I do where I write down what we've budgeted for it for the month and then I split up how I'm going to cash stuff it every single week. And so what I do whenever we have a discrepancy is I'll go to the category that I'm looking for, so household, and then this first week I'm just gonna put minus 10 so that I know to actually stuff it $10 less than the originally planned amount. So that's how I handle a discrepancy like that from week to week. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put minus 100. Oh, I also have to, well, I'll do that off camera. Um, I have to figure out my grocery discrepancy over the course of the month, which is not that big of a deal actually. So here we go. So I'm going to just cross that out and where'd my other grocery one go? There we go. All right. So now that I know that they're at least reconciled in that I've acknowledged that I have the discrepancy and I will work out how to divvy that up over the course of the month. Next up, okay, this will be, well, let me see. Do we have any other high priority? No, we have no other high priority. So we can go into low priority now. 
and grab out a couple of things. So first up is his and hers. We are each spending $8 on um, the season of scrubs that we purchased. So no way, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's perfect. I love when that happens. And Mr. Simple has $40 left in his spending. Oops, there we go. There it is. Like lost my train of thought there. And then I need to pull eight from mine as well. Okay. Okay, I'll just do this and bring back two. And that leaves me at 25, six, and seven. All right, so 27 there. Now I need to, all right, little disruption there because um, I forgot my kids had an early release day today. So my daughter just walked in the door. Anyways, <laughs> um, I think we're done with low priority sinking funds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my holiday sinking funds because we have some Christmas and Thanksgiving purchases to go ahead and return here as well. We'll start with Thanksgiving. So we've got 26 and 32 i think that's it so 58 i need to pull from thanksgiving what am i doing oh my goodness okay i keep getting interrupted okay so i'm pulling 58 from thanksgiving so 20 40 uh, 20 40 60 and one and two back um, and here we go. So now on Thanksgiving, I've got 20, 40, 65, 66, 67, 68, and 69. All right. So 69 there. And I'll cross that out. And then we've got, let's see, 28... 22, oh, that's it. So $50 from Christmas. There we go. Oh, good, 20, 40, 50. And remaining in Christmas, we've got 125, 26, 27, and 28. So 128 left in Christmas. Oh, there's the other one. So 128, and let me just cross that out. Did I pull from hers? I thought I did. I did, because I wrote down my remaining balance. I just didn't check it off. Okay, so that's gonna do it for holiday, and then we just have to go into my business binder and finish that out. So let me grab this really quickly. And actually, so part of this, um, let me see, 82 plus 35 is 117. I'm actually gonna grab some of it from shipping supplies because it actually a lot of it, or some of it was shipping supplies. I just put it under materials because I knew I could cover it in materials. Um, shipping supplies took a hit in October, um, but I'm gonna just compensate for it this way. So minus 25, so I just need to grab 92 from materials and I may not Oh my gosh, that's so funny. No. So I'm gonna grab eight back. So five, six, seven, eight. Um, my goodness, that was convoluted. All right, so now in materials, I've got 50, 70, 80, 95, 96, 97, 98, and 99. All right, so now that I am done with that, here, I'll just actually put this under here. 
Um, I have to subtract my discrepancy numbers here. So we've got 489 was our original starting number, minus 10, minus 100, and I should have $379 sitting over here. So let's see how we did. We've got 1, 200, 20, 40, 60, 80, 300, 20, 30, 40, 50, 5, 60, 5, 70, 5, 76, 77, 78, and 79, 379. We did it. And this is how we do it every single week. And I promise you that even if you are confused now, if you watch enough of these videos, if you watch more than just my content, you'll get a bigger picture of how people handle the expense tracking portion of their budgeting system every single week. It really does start to become clear. And then you can kind of figure out what you want to do to make your system function for you really well. So just some encouragement if you're new and you're like, how am I ever going to get this? I promise you, you will in the end. But that is going to do it for me for today's video. Um, remember that my Etsy shop is on sale for the entirety of November. Um, and I'm also kind of revamping some of my savings challenges savings challenges as well. So be on the lookout for those. You can follow my shop and then you'll be notified whenever I... Um, uh, put a new list listing on my shop as well. So, um, but I'll try to like update you guys on here and my social or my Instagram account as well, whenever I put a new product up so that you'll just be aware. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed today's video, I would love it so, so much if you would give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful first week of November. I hope that it's relaxing and you're recovering from Halloween and your kids are not too hyped up on sugar even though we all know they're going to be, <laughs> but I hope it's as relaxing as it can be. And I'm going to be back here with you guys again on Monday. Next week is a super duper content heavy week. Uh, like I mentioned, I have my Etsy and YouTube cash stuffing coming up. That's actually going to be up on Tuesday. And then next Thursday I am putting up my bill condensing video. So, and then of course my regular weekly check-in on Friday. So it's going to be lots of VEDA next week for you. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend and I will be back here with you again on Monday. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.